start with um, a couple of tweets that you've actually sent out talking about what went on. Talk a little bit about the arguments or the questions that were being posed. Let's start with uh, Justice Scalia and what he said in court today. Justice Scalia was questioning whether these corporations should have to pay for what he calls abortifacients and what they believe are abortifacients, which mean forms of birth control that they believe cause abortions. Uh, and the Obama administration's attorney was saying federal law and state law do not consider these forms of birth control to, to be abortion causing. And of course, medical experts agree with that, that, these, that birth control prevents pregnancy and does not cause abortion. And so therefore, the government has a compelling interest in making sure that employers provide this benefit to women. Now, beyond the question of whether the morning after pill, et cetera, are, are as uh, Justice Lee said, abortive patients or not, the other issue was whether this kind of a case could be transferable, right? So you also tweeted that Justices Sotomayor and Kagan had some specific questions about what else could be implied uh, by a ruling in Hobby Lobby's favor. And, and you tweeted that they asked specifically whether corporations can refuse to cover things like vaccines and blood transfusions. How did that exchange go down? Of course. Well, this case has really broad implications beyond just contraception. Sotomayor, before Hobby Lobby's lawyer even finished the first sentence of his opening argument, jumped in and said, what else? What, how many religious objectors are going to come up if we allow Hobby Lobby to refuse to cover birth control? What if you want to refuse to comply with vaccination requirements? And beyond that, what if you refuse to comply with minimum wage laws, social security taxes, hiring discrimination laws, family leave laws? I mean, this could affect so so many things beyond health care. You know, we recently saw that, uh, that case in Arizona where they were considering a law that would allow employers to refuse to serve LGBT people because they believe homosexuality is a sin, you know? Should corporations have the religious right to refuse all these different things, to refuse to comply with federal law? Can a corporation even exercise religion? Well, and that's what... Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, go on. I'm just curious, sort of, what was the response then from the attorneys for Hobby Lobby and Canistoga? They said, that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about vaccinations. Uh, Hobby Lobby's lawyer said maybe in, in the case of vaccinations, that would be a different situation because, uh, you know, of the, con the concept of herd immunity. Maybe it would pose a danger to society if we didn't, you know, vaccinate people. And, and with the case of birth control, it's different. That's what he was arguing. So, Laura, you've got a, a piece up at the Huffington Post where you talk about sort of the public uh, perception of this, in which you say that 68% of the female voters who would be affected by the Supreme Court decision disagree with Hobby Lobby lobby, according to a new poll, more than half say they disagree strongly. And meanwhile, we have our own NBC News Wall Street Journal poll that also talks about this, saying that uh, as far as employers who object to covering birth control, 53% in our poll said that they should not be exempt, 41% say they should be. How uh, dispositive are public opinions about these cases inside the Supreme Court? And does that even come up or did it come up? You know, it didn't, it didn't come up at all. The only way it came up a little bit, uh, you know, tangentially. And Kennedy said, what if the religious beliefs of the employees don't line up with the religious beliefs of the employers? Don't employees have any rights? What about the women that are going to be denied this coverage because of the religious beliefs of their employers? And so it, it, it kind of came up in that sense, but, but public opinion right now about this case is not going to influence the Supreme Court's decision. All right, clearly not. Laura Bassett, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.